Welcome back aliens, my name is Evan Reddy and let's continue with the series on JavaScript. In this video, we'll talk about objects. Now see, the thing is, object is one of the most important thing in some of the languages because it represents the real world in the virtual world. Example, let's say in the real world, we deal with object, right? We don't deal with normal variables. Example, if I want to talk about a laptop, laptop is an object. Now this laptop will have certain properties, right? Uh, so let's say if I want to represent a laptop in the virtual world, I have to define it as one object which will have multiple properties. Uh, maybe you can talk about the laptop configuration, the CPU, RAM, the storage, uh, you can talk about the brand. In the same way, if you want to represent a bank account, so a user bank account will have certain properties, right? So a bank account will be one object or the user as one object and the user will have multiple properties the account balance, the username, the password, and all those aspects. So whatever you can think about, it's an object, right? So how do you represent an object in JavaScript? So basically we have different ways of getting object, okay? So we'll go one by one. The first one we'll deal with is object literal, okay? Because here you literally mention all the properties of an object. Okay, so what I'm talking about. So let's say I want to represent an object. This time we'll go with, let's say alien. So let's say we want to create an object called alien, right? Now this alien will have certain properties. Uh, so we'll say alien. So when you talk about alien, what exactly alien means? Now, if you are new to this video or this channel, you might not be knowing this, but I call my audience as aliens because I believe they live in virtual world, right? And so they are not from real world. So they are aliens, right? So an uh, alien, so every IT professional is an alien, right? So how do you represent an IT professional? So of course, every programmer you can say is has a name has the technology of course everyone loves some technology right and then maybe the number of experience in that technology so this is how you can define the properties so basically it's a key and a value pair right so we can have multiple properties and each property will be having a, a key and a value now how do you define them now first of all let me create a simple object without any properties can we do that yes you can simply open a curly package and close it this is your object Trust me, <laughs> I know that looks weird, but that is your first object. Now, the only problem is you can't actually see the data in it, right? We have not defined the properties yet. But if you, even if you don't define, that's your object. Now, how do I prove it? Now, if you go back to our second or third session, I don't remember the, when we talked about the data types, we have talked about different data types, right? We have talked about numbers, string, boolean, and then we said, Whatever is not primitive is an object. So of course, when you talk about objects, they are not primitives in this case. So this is an object, okay? This, we, we, are, we don't have any primitive value assigned. So that's an object, right? Okay, let me just print it. Let me just print it as it is. And let's see what happens if you run this code. The moment you run this code, you can see we got empty object. Now, how do you know this is an object? So we know the special operator, right? We have type of operator. Let's do that and run. And you can see it says object. Okay, so that's your op first object. Awesome. Now we know it's an object, but I want to assign some properties. How do you assign a property? Okay, so since we have a curly brackets, of course, this makes sense, right? It's a collection of properties. Uh, so we can put our properties here. Okay, how do we define this? It's actually very simple. So when you open the curly brackets in that block, you define your properties. I will go with the first one. I will go with name. So the name is my property. And how do you assign a value to it? Okay, now that's tricky. So we don't use equal to symbol, we use a colon because that's a key and a value. It's a pairing basically. So you say name and then you assign a value to it. So I will say the name is Naveen and then I will give a comma. That's how you separate multiple properties. Uh, now, if you are coming from different language, let's say you know Java. So in, in Java, we use map concept for this key value. Then in Python, we have dictionary. In fact, most of the languages, they have dictionaries. So it's almost similar. Right here, let me just define another property. Let's say technology. So my favorite technology is, I will say JavaScript at this point because we are learning JavaScript. Let me define that. Let's go with these two properties. In the upcoming videos, we'll expand this example so that it will make sense. But as of now, I just have a very simple example or simple object here, which is alien. And can we create multiple objects? Of course we can. We can create thousands of objects and that's what we do in real world. So when you work on a big project or any real world project, you will be working with multiple objects. Okay, so we got these two properties, right? And that's your object. Now let me just print it as it is. We are not specifying what I want to print. I just want to print the object. And you can see you will get the output in that format. Let me just 
to that here. Okay, so we got the output, right? Now, I don't want to fetch the entire object. I just want to fetch a particular value. I want to know the alien, let's say name. I want to know the name of the alien. Now, in this case, of course, if you print alien, it will print the object as it is. I don't want that. I want to get the name, right? So in this case, what you can do is you can say alien dot name. It's that simple. You have to use a dot operator. Okay, we have another option, but let's go with the dot operator. Okay, so we got it, right? So we are getting this name here. What do you think? Will it work? Let's try. It's working. You can see we got, uh, we got Naveen there. Okay, that's perfect. Can we also print a technology? Yes, we can. Let's run this and... Okay, you can see we got the output. So how do you fetch a value of a property or an object? You use the dot operator. Now, that's not the only option you have. You have one more option. You can also use square brackets. So you can say alien. And in this square bracket, see, because see, when you mention alien, it will print, it will fetch all the properties. We don't want all the properties. We want only one or two, depend upon your requirement. So in this case, I can mention that in a square bracket. You can say, hey, I want the alien data but not all, specifically in that square bracket and in single quote, you can mention, I want to fetch name. Okay, this is how you can fetch the value and you can see we got name. You can also fetch the technology. Yeah, so you can also, you, you can see we got JS. Now the question is, which is better? Which one you should use? Should you use dot operator or square bracket? Now it depends upon the requirement. What makes much more sense is to use dot operator because that defines, okay, alien dot name, alien dot tech, if you have object inside an object, it makes much more sense to use that. But then square bracket has its own requirement. So given a choice, I will always use dot operator. But there are certain requirements where you have to use a uh, square bracket. Now, what are those requirements? Let's say if you have, let's say one more property here, but then the property name has two words. Example, in this case, if you can see we have a name, we have tech. What if you have one more property, which is not of one word? Can we do that? Can let's say I want to have number of years of experience. I can say work experience. So now I have a property of two words. Now see, logically you can use underscore here. If you, if you have two words, that's how you define it, right? Just to keep it simple. But then what if you have two words and you have to give a space in between? In that scenario, you can use a single quote. Again, I'm not a big fan of this type of property naming convention, but it gives an option. You can do that. Let's say the number of year of experience is four. Okay, so if you have a property name with two words, of course you will use a single quote. Now, why I'm not using single quote here? It's a number, right? We don't use single quote for numbers. Okay, and then if you want to fetch that, you have to say work experience. You can't use dot operator here. So there are certain conditions where you have to, you have to use the square bracket. Actually, there's one more. What if I have, let's say, I want to fetch the name, okay? So, of course, if you want to fetch the name, dot operator makes sense, so you will say name here. But what if you don't know what to fetch? You will be asking the user, hey, hey user, what you want to know? Do you want to know the name or the tech? So, let's say, user is giving you the input, okay? And then, uh, the input is name. Let's say that's a scenario. Input is name. Now imagine this name is actually coming from the user. We are defining it statically here, but imagine that's coming from the user. And then I want to fetch the name. So depending upon what the input is, I want to fetch that element. Can I use dot now? Of course not. If you try to use input, it will give you some issue. It will say undefined because we don't have input as a field inside alien, right? So we are saying, hey, I'm not talking about input. I'm talking about the value of the input. In that case, you can't use dot operator you need to use the square bracket, okay? You are evaluating the expression to get the value. So name is coming here and then you're getting the value. I hope that makes sense, right? Yeah, so that was the introduction of an object. So what is object basically? It represents the real entities, okay? So in this case, we are going for alien. Of course, you can make a complex object. Okay, before going ahead, uh, before ending this video, I just have one more thing. In this particular object, we have properties, right? But can we also have functions? Example, let's say if you talk about an alien, we have, of course, we have properties, right? But then we also have a behavior, right? We write code, we test the applications, we give a speech, right? So we do make a lot of content or we, we write a lot of code. Can we have functions inside the object? Well, that we'll see later. Okay, uh, short answer is yes, but how we can do that, that we'll see in the upcoming videos.
So I hope you enjoyed this video where we talked about objects. So if you like the video, hit the like button and do subscribe for other videos. Bye-bye.